What's up guys, Inspector Gadget here and today we're going to be doing an inspection of the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. So, let's get inspecting. So the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 is, well, essentially just a Samsung Galaxy Note 2, but larger. I mean, it has the same 1.6 GHz quad-core processor, the same Mali 400 GPU, I mean, the S Pen's about the same size, and uh, it even has the same 2 GB of RAM. However, it does have a few additional features like the IR Blaster that you can use to control your television. But a quick size comparison between the Galaxy Note 8, the Galaxy Note 2, and the new Samsung Galaxy S4 definitely shows off the real estate of the Note 8's 8-inch display. However, it's kinda disappointing that Samsung only included a 5 megapixel shooter on the rear and that they didn't up the pixel density on the display. Nevertheless, Android's 4.1.2 Jelly Bean is still a treat on this 1280 by 800 189 pixel per inch display. The Google Play Store still looks vibrant and playful with its over 800,000 apps. And Samsung does a great job integrating its TouchWiz UI with the underlying Android operating system. And all the usual suspects are still there doing what they do best. Google Plus still keeps you in touch with your circles. Google Maps still gets you there, and boy does the larger display come in handy here. And who can forget Google Books, which is by far the best book reading app I've ever used on a tablet. And that includes the Amazon Kindle Fire HD and the iPad Mini. I mean, I think it's just awesome how Google integrated its Maps and Translate apps into the Google Books app. These additions really give you an immersive experience, and that handy dictionary, well, that's just a bonus. And from here, Android just keeps on going with its dynamic magazine reading experience. I mean, images were bright and vivid, text was easily readable as long as it wasn't too small, and the overall experience of the UI was as smooth as butter. And that seems to be the general feeling you get when using the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. I mean, when compared with something like, say, the Nexus 7, which is more snappy, the Galaxy Note 8 brings new meaning to Project Butter. Just look at how smoothly Google Earth renders. Still, there are some minor annoyances, like the inability to create folders by simply dragging them on top of each other. You've got to drag them up and then create the folder and then name it and then you finally get to make your drop. Still, staples like Jelly Bean's expandable notifications work as well as they always do. This really comes in handy when you want to take a quick look at messages or an email without having to actually open the app. And of course, widgets, which can really be handy but can't be found on the iPad Mini or the Fire HD. Of course, web browsing was a breeze with the Galaxy Note 8's 2GB of RAM. Samsung has even included third-party apps like Flipboard, which one might say competes with Google's currents, but there's a lot more competition going on here than that. M more about that later. Polaris Office takes care of all of my productivity needs, but all work and no play makes Gadget a dull inspector. Okay, that was corny. Anyway. I had a lot of fun viewing my pictures in Samsung's spiral gallery or playing around with Paper Artist, a Samsung app which allows you to bring your pictures to life with the touch of a finger or the S Pen and a plethora of features and filters. And of course I had to test out my favorite third party app, Netflix, which looked great on the Note 8's 8 inch screen. So you might ask, what sets the Note 8 apart from any other tablet? the S Pen. I mean, aside from Google Now, the S Pen is one of the most awesome innovations I've seen in a tablet. And of course, it's not just the pen, it's the software that goes along with the pen. The Note 8 continues Samsung's tradition of stellar handwriting recognition and the ability to create the most dynamic and comprehensive notes that I've ever seen on a device. I mean, you'll almost forget you're not writing with a real pen. And the S Pen even takes it a step further, like recognizing handwritten math formulas with the help of Wolfram Alpha. 
I mean, besides Samsung's Note series, what other tablet can do that? S Note even takes a stab at geometry, recognizing many geometric shapes. You can even record your handwritten or audio notes. And S Note even takes advantage of Android's speech to text feature. One awesome feature that you won't even find in the Galaxy Note 2 is Awesome Note. Think of it as Evernote with a much better user interface. Awesome Note HD is easily the most awesome digital planner I've ever seen. You won't find a better way to organize your life. From your ideas to your diary, your travel journal, shopping and to-do lists, I mean, it's all there. I mean, with such innovative software, I can see Samsung making a play for its own OS in the near future. Before then, however, Samsung might want to get group play to work with all of its devices. Nevertheless, you still can't argue with the usefulness of Samsung's multi-window feature. You just gotta love using two apps on the same screen simultaneously. And although I partially agree with the school of thought that people who take pictures and video with their tablets look like fools, my contention is if you're gonna put a camera on a tablet, you might as well go hard with an 8 megapixel sensor. Still, I found the 1.3 megapixel shooter on the front sufficient for Google Plus Hangouts, Skyping, and those vanity Instagram shots. And although using the Play Music app on the Note 8 was great, I think it's going to be interesting to see how Google's $7.99 a month unlimited streaming service fares. Of course, I've never been disappointed with watching movies on any Samsung device. Colors were perfectly saturated and sound was a blast. I even got the same experience playing games. Rich colors, clear sound with about as much dynamic range as you can expect from a tablet, and high frame rates made playing games on the Galaxy Note 8 a joy. And of course, that Mali 400 GPU and 1.6 GHz quad core CPU, along with the 2 GB of RAM, performed like a champ with more processor intensive games like Dead Trigger. So, what's the bottom line? If you're a college student or a business professional who wants a tablet for work and play, the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 was made just for you. So that's it for our inspection of the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, guys. Let me know what you think about the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 down in the comment section below. I think it's an awesome device, guys. And also let me know uh, if you like this video by going ahead and hitting that like button. Also, if you want the latest and greatest in tech news and reviews, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm Inspector Gadget, and I will see you on the other side. Peace.